This is our second video on the rules of indices and in this video we're going to look at raising to a power. If we have a to the power of m and we raise this to the power of n, we have a to the power of m multiplied by n which we can write as mn. So if I took now 2 to the power of 2 and I raised this to the power of 3, we would have now 2 to the power of 6, or if we wanted, we could write this as 64. This is the same as saying 2 to the power of 2 multiplied by 2 to the power of 2 multiplied by 2 to the power of 2. So if you like, going back to our addition, when we multiplied, we could see that this was 2 to the power of 6. Or, if you like, this is going to be 4 multiplied by 4 multiplied by 4, which is going to be 64. Clearly, we can see that this is a much easier method to use, especially when the numbers either get big or they get quite tricky. If I had, for example, now 2x squared and we wanted to cube this, what we would need to do is raise each of these terms to the power of 3. What we would need is 2 to the power of 1. As we're multiplying the powers, we're certainly not multiplying the 2. So we'd have now 2 to the power of 3 times by 1, which is 3, multiplied now by x to the power of 2 times by 3, which is going to be 6. 2 to the power of 3 is going to give me 8. So we would write this as 8x to the power of 6. A common error is that students write that this is going to be 6x to the power of 6. That is not the case. We are multiplying the powers, not this value here. So for example, if this was 2 to the power of 4, we would end up now with 2 to the power of 12. Let's go ahead and use this particular law on some examples. So, in question two, we're asked to simplify the following. I always suggest that students go round and write a little one here, if there isn't a power shown. So what we're going to have here is two, and that's going to be two to the power of three, and then we're going to have m to the power of six. So, very similar to the one I've just done. Two to the power of three is eight, so we have 8m to the power of 6. Here, now, I've got 3 on the outside of the bracket. I've got m to the fourth and n to the first power. Again, I'm just going to put a little 1 here because we're going to be multiplying each of these powers by the 2. So the 3 stays where it is. That is not raised to the power of 2. Then we're going to have m to the power of of 4 times by 2 which is 8 and then we're going to have n raised to the power of 2 times by 1 which is going to give me 2. So we could write this without the bracket as 3m to the 8th n squared and that now is written in uh, its simplest form I suppose. Okay here we do need to raise the 3 to the power of 3. Remember, we're not going to multiply 3 by the 3. That is incorrect. The answer is not 9. It's 3 to the power of 1. So what we're going to have, and just writing this out, we're going to have 3 to the power of 3, m to the power of 3 times by minus 1, which is going to give me minus 3, and then we're going to have n to the power of 2 times 3, which is 6. So 3 to the power of 3 is 27, m to the negative 3, n to the power of 6. You might also see this written now as 27 n to the power of 6 divided by m cubed. In a later video, we will look now at the negative power. This would be absolutely fine as your answer, and up as far as we've learned, that would be perfectly fine. Okay, this one's slightly trickier, as we've got two brackets. What I'm going to do is just go ahead now and put a line between these. So what we've got now is this bracket here. I'm raising this one to the power of 2. So all I'm going to do is put a little power of 1 here, and we're going to go ahead and write this out. 
So we're going to have 3m squared, and I'm going to multiply that now by 3 to the power of 2. So that's going to be 3 to the power of 2, and then I'm going to have m to the power of 8. Another misconception here is that students write 6 as they're adding them. When we raise into a power, we multiply. So that's going to be m to the power of 8. At this stage, of course, we're multiplying, and we can write this now as 3 to the power of 3. As we've got the same base, we add the powers. And then m to the power of 10. That's 2 plus 8, which we could write now as 27 m to the 10th. So that now is in its simplest form. So here I am multiplying, therefore I'm adding the powers. I certainly wasn't here as I was raising to a power, but at this stage, if you like, you could have written that as 3m squared multiplied by 3 squared m to the 8th. We would deal with these values first, which gave us now 3 to the power 3, and then now our powers of m, m squared, and m to the 8th. Okay, here, again, I'm going to put a little 1 on the 4, such that I don't miss it out and do anything silly. 4 to the power of 1 times by 3 is going to give me 4 to the power of 3. So this is 4 to the power of 3. We're going to get m to the power of 9 divided by n to the power of 15. 3 times by 5. 4 to the power of 3, or 4 cubed, is going to give us 64. m to the power of 9 divided by n to the power of 15. You could be asked to write that, and again, using the negative power, which we'll look at in a future video, 64m to the 9th, and then n to the negative 15. Of course, this, at this stage of learning, is absolutely fine as it is. So let's go back and look at the law. If we have a to the power of m raised to the power of n, we multiply the powers. Again, if we don't have an index on one of them, so for example, now if we have 3x and then y cubed to the power of 4, we go ahead and simply write down a little 1, a little 1 here, as we're multiplying the powers. We're not multiplying now any of these values by 4. We simply multiply by the power. So that is the law for raising to a power.